and we're back. <laughs> uh, welcome back, Savannah, to the Savannah Business Showcase. Uh, you are here once again with Brand Grant and Cynthia Wright here talking about Leadership Southeast Georgia. Um, and we're going to put them through the lightning round. <laughs> so the lightning round is basically uh, just a bunch of random questions I ask, uh, but they help to motivate uh, the listeners. They help to inspire the listeners. They help to, um, you know, tell a little bit more about your story. And yeah, we'll go from there. You can ask them as short as long as you want. Okay. Okay. Ready? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What, what did you want to be as a kid and how does it relate to your current business? I wanted to be Dan Rather. I wanted okay. to be uh, on the news, uh, be an anchor. And when I finally got to journalism school at the University of Georgia and I heard nightmare stories about Deborah Norville mm. sleeping in her car for years, it seemed like, whether that's true or whether mm -hmm. it's not true, it was what I heard. And I thought, mm -mm, I need to go to the more commercial side of journalism. And so I, I graduated from the journalism school with a degree in advertising. Awesome. Um, I wanted to be a writer okay. for a long time, so I did the journalism thing as well. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, in middle school, this is really embarrassing to admit. <laughs> I wrote like a fourth Harry Potter book before it came out. Okay. Wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. Impressive. Thank you. Yeah, I enjoyed it. So yeah. that does relate to what I do now with mm -hmm. press releases. I do a lot of writing columns and awesome. stuff like that. So. Awesome. How, how close did you get to the actual storyline? Oh, none at all. <laughs> Voldemort had like a daughter who got together with Harry Potter. It was crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just they're, they're on HBO so I just binge watched all of them oh, uh, yeah. a couple of weeks ago all the Harry Potter for the first time ever yeah really yeah, they were pretty good they were oh, good too oh, really good. clearly yeah I'd love to watch them all for the first time again oh, That'd yeah. be <laughs> <laughs> uh, how have you approached failure in life um, huh? Full failure just teaches you what to do differently. You know, I, I take it as a, okay, that didn't work. How do I tweak it and make it work? Mm. Um, so just keep going. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. Um, keep moving forward. Always get up and keep moving forward. And I think that's what failure taught me mm -hmm. um, uh, is, is you, you, you can just never give up. You yeah. constantly, constantly move forward no matter what happens. And you learn from it. Right. So you get better. Mm. Mm -hmm. Um, who influenced you early in life and who's your mentor now? Oh, my gosh. Um, so many people. You know how many people play a role in in influencing you um, and inspiring you? Ah, oh, um, yeah, gosh, there are just tough. so many. That's the challenge. Um, I could sit here and name, name after name after name after name. Bertice Berry is a... Um, uh, a lecturer, an author, a sociologist, um, uh, uh, just an amazing human being mm -hmm. who chose Richmond Hill as her home, Savannah as her home. And uh, I got to know her over the last five or six years, and, and she's a true inspiration to me. Um, uh, there have been mentors to me on the Savannah Economic Development Authority board mm -hmm. over the years from Dick Estes, Tommy Hester, Cliff McCurry. I had, I, I should not name names because okay. I will I will someone. I will forget somebody who is really very very important to me yeah. Yeah. Um, and there are so so many and I I guess um, because there's no way to to, to limit that um, I guess the only thing I've learned or one of the things most important I've learned from it is you don't necessarily have to be a mentor in a very formalized way to have a very, very positive impact mm -hmm. and inspire someone else's life and choices. And so um, because of the way I have received all those gifts over the years from so many people and all their wisdom and experiences, I, I'm constantly thinking about and, and trying to deliver that to anybody I come in contact with. Yeah. Um, yeah. Pass it on over here. Yeah. <laughs> my, my team at, at work, um, you know, they obviously, they're who I work with every day, so that's certainly a, a, a cause, but, um, you know, my children's friends and in any way I can it's you know it's what's that famous thing each one teach one yeah mm -hmm. um, and as you're as you're stepping up the ladder reach up you know reach back so I think that's just part of all, our, all of our responsibility mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so many people ahead of me so many people who, who are not where I am that's true right very true Oh, she said it pretty eloquently. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of people, and I'm not going to name them all because someone is going to get mad yeah. at me for leaving someone yeah. out. Um, but 
there are so many savannah has that community spirit where a lot of professionals feel the need to bring other people up and i'm very blessed to have met a lot of people who um, took me under their wings taught me everything they know or some things they know and just really helped me along the way um, early on my biggest fan was my nana mm -hmm. you know she taught me how to cook she taught me how to <laughs> take care of family she was always the one around the kitchen table bringing the whole family together for a meal on Sundays right. um, so I learned a lot from her Awesome. That's the only one I'll name. <laughs> okay. Uh, understood. Yeah, I probably made a terrible mistake. No. <laughs> no. You were uh, fine. <laughs> um, advice for new entrepreneurs or people looking to start a business? Get involved. Um, again, network, network, network. Um, also, one of my partners, Marjorie Young, is a big advocate for SCORE, hmm. which is a group of retired executives who really coach people who, if you're looking to start a business, there's someone in the SCORE network who is probably in business um, in the same industry that you're wanting to get into that can give you advice that they learned along the way. Um, also, they'll help you make a business plan, go through your financials, all of that. So SCORE is a huge resource that I don't think younger people really know about. Mm -hmm. I had no idea about SCORE until Marjorie started telling me about it. Mm -hmm. um, but that is a great vehicle for people who are looking to uh, start a business, grow their business, enhance their business, whatever you need to do. They are, they're free mentors, right. which right. is great. Yeah. Yeah. I would say, too, the Creative Coast for creative-focused yes. mm -hmm. uh, and mm. technology-focused endeavors. Um, it's an incredible community of people who help each other, um, and uh, the organization itself works to connect entrepreneurs with the right resources or assets. Mm -hmm. The Savannah, uh, the Small Business Development Center. Oh, that yeah. That's a good it, one. It is, so, to her point, plug in. Mm -hmm. Find out all of the support uh, entities, organizations that are out there and plug into those. Mm -hmm. um, tell me a story about a failure. Uh. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I tend to erase those from memory. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, or you turn them around yeah, so, so, so that then the, the story is ultimately triumphant, right? Right. <laughs> right. Um, I mean, I'll say that, uh, uh, I mean, divorce could be considered a failure. Um, and I had uh, three very young children under five and, and went through a divorce. And um, while it was earth shattering, um, soul crushing at mm. the time, um, it also made me stronger than I would have been otherwise and and uh, helped me to realize talents and skills that I didn't know I had mm -hmm. and um, propelled me in new directions mm -hmm. and and so I can't regret it right and so um, so I think that's why when you say tell me about a failure it's difficult to say because if you're someone who keeps moving forward right. mm -hmm. that contributes then to your real to your triumphant story mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know whatever that triumph is it, it contributes to your success ultimately mm -hmm. and true. so it's not a failure yeah. story yeah. yeah yeah if you stop there if you stop at the failure then it's a failure mm. Right. But if you keep moving forward, it becomes part of your success. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. I, I love you, Brett, already. Just, <laughs> yeah, you're so, you're you? so, yeah, you're so self uh, respect, not respect, but you know what I'm trying to say. Like, you, you, oh, you know yourself. Yeah. You know yourself better than anybody I try else. Try really hard. Yeah. So, but going through something really tough yeah. makes you know yourself, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, because you, you're, you're, especially when you're in pain, mm -hmm. you'll say, I do not want to be here. Mm -hmm. What right. do I need to do? to move to the place where I want to be. Yeah. And then you you have to do your self work in order to get there. That's right. Really. That's right. Me too. So so what advice would you have for an entrepreneur? We know that being an entrepreneur um, takes a lot of time, puts a lot of stress and on on a marriage. So what what would you say for an entrepreneur that's going to go through a similar uh, situation as you went through? Well, I think probably communication is vital mm -hmm. um, between those two people and um, an understanding of what you're both willing to do um mm -hmm. so y y you have to really communicate and say okay you know are you on board with me on this and if and, and and if not why not and how can we get there and what do we negotiate because yeah. 
I truly think that only the six most successful marriages encourage the greatest growth in both people, but that's really challenging. Mm. It's really challenging to respect the individuality and the individual goals of each partner and stay together in a marriage sometimes. Mm-hmm. So so I right. think communication might be might be the very best thing. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> Did you have anything you want to add? And I, and I love uh, you too, Cynthia. Well, uh, <laughs> I appreciate Who that. Does love you? <laughs> um, well, I'm actually engaged to be married in October. Congratulations. So I'm like soaking all this in, but I completely agree. We are so open with our communication. And we, before I join the board or whatever I'm doing, because I over volunteer myself all the time, we have a conversation like, hey, this is my time commitment for it. Is this what are you? What are your thoughts? Where are your hesitations? Are we on the same page? And usually we are because he's just as business minded as I am. Mm-hmm. So that's something I would say: find a person who has who understands your drive and mm-hmm. your. I want to be top of my industry, and yeah. he does too. So he gets that, and that really that support makes it easier for us. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. My wife and I are in a similar situation. She's a pharmacist, but she's like a. She was gra- went to one of the top schools, graduated yeah. at the top of the class, and now she's like has so many letters behind her name. Yeah. It's just ridiculous, you know. Or she just wants to kill it yeah. in business. That's yes. right. That's, that's right. You, if and if that's not someone's focus, which it shouldn't be all of your focus, but if it isn't like your main focus or your top three focus, then maybe you should reevaluate and see. Okay, well, I really I want to find someone whose focus is the same. It aligns with you. So beautiful. Mm-hmm. Okay, a few more before we get out of here. Um, his he's one favorite book. A favorite book. Mm-hmm. I know it's a hard question, so you can do like favorite book uh, you've read recently. I like Fahrenheit four fifty one. Okay, that's a good one. But again, I love books. So <laughs> <laughs> to have a book that's burning books is yeah. like oh. Huh. <laughs> mm-hmm. And they're coming out with a movie. So I got, know yeah. they are. I just saw that. I can't wait to go see it. So I, I, I don't know that I could have one single favorite book, but I can give you a quick list of all my favorites that come to mind just okay. really quickly. Yeah. Uncle Tom's Cabin is mm-hmm. one of my favorites. Um, um, the Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks is okay. one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. Anything by Malcolm Gladwell uh, brilliant. is uh, I love. Um, have you seen his podcast? I haven't, but do you, do I keep hearing about. I don't. Okay. I am not that cool, <laughs> but I want to be that cool. So, okay. so I would appreciate a link or yes, something. I'll, I'll help you out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. My, my business is like launching podcasts. So yeah, I'll, I'll I, I got you. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. And then another one of my favorites, which really, um, I have uh, dog eared. I mean, I have written in it. It is. I've taped it. Um. And it's called A Return to Love by Marianne Williamson. Oh, man. It's my favorite quote oh. out of that. I know you know what you're yes, talking about, too. Yeah. Our fear is not that we are inadequate. Right. But that, yes. I have given that to my daughters um, right. as they have as they have moved on into college. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it's just truly, it's a, it's a, it's a guidebook. It's a I, I pull it back love. out. Yeah. It's A Return to Love. A Return to mm-hmm. Love. By I'm Marianne right. Williamson. It it's one of my yeah. favorites. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Next and question. And four agreements. <laughs> four agreements. <yeah. laughs> um, so there's a concept called the eighty twenty rule, uh, Pareto's principle. Twenty uh, percent of your actions equal eighty percent of your results. Mm. So in your business and or at, yeah, so in your business and your position, what are the twenty percent of things that you get that you do that get you the most results? What are the small amount of things you do on a daily basis that get you the most results? I train my people to be able to do my job. Hmm. So I teach, great answer. Yeah, I teach each one of them to be able to do what I do, to know the, my clients, to know what's going on with my projects, and who they need to contact if I'm not available. Hmm. What programs they need to update along the way. So each one of them can essentially take over my position, but that is, that's is—that's the team I want to build. Mm. And I get the most results out of my team when they know everything about it. So that's how I, I make sure my, my training is up to date. That is the perfect answer. I don't think I could improve upon it. And it, <laughs> it reminds me of our current chairman at CETA, uh, Kevin Jackson. And he uh, grew up in Cartersville, Georgia, and... Um, in 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 very poor circumstances, uh, rich on love, but but probably not on finances. Uh, mm-hmm. Made his way through football to the University of Georgia. Uh, 
came to Savannah, married, built a family, but built a business called EnviroVac. And his story is so inspiring, but it's his people that he constantly is is talking about when he talks mm. about the success that he's achieved. He'd be an excellent guest if you could get him. Yeah. <laughs> What's his name again? Kevin Jackson. Kevin and he Jackson. is the current chair of the Savannah Economic Development Authority and, and uh, founder and president, I believe, might still be his title, though it's grown and grown and grown and grown, and they're all over the southeastern U.S. now, um, from four people to a thousand. Um Envirovac. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Awesome. A um, couple more. This time flew by, so thank you guys for coming in. Um, once for once again, for everybody out there listening, if you're just joining us, I'm here with Brent Grant, uh, Vice Chair of Leadership Southeast Georgia and COO of the Savannah Economic Development Authority, and Cynthia Wright, uh, administer, Administrator of uh, <laughs> Leadership. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> of Leadership Southeast Georgia. Um, and also with uh, Cares Trade PR and, and Cecilia Russo Marketing. Cecilia Russo Marketing. Yeah, their and, sister company is right, confusing. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. And uh, what ads? Savannah JC, so you're yep. just all over the place. Former um, president. Immediate past president. Immediate mm -hmm. past president. Okay. Yep. So two more questions, maybe three. We'll see. Okay. Um, if you had a superpower or ability, what would you choose and why? Ooh. Da, da, da. Um, I'd love to be a mermaid. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what a great thing. How much fun would that be? Right. <laughs> um, if, I, guess, I guess to fly... Mm -hmm. I, I, I have had dreams where I can fly, and that's pretty awesome in those dreams. Yeah. But I, but you know what? I'm thinking on a on a uh, another level. If if I really could have a superpower, it would be to heal people's souls, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> to help them, um, because I feel like uh, it's pain and injury um, of the soul that mm -hmm. has creates mm -hmm. all these the negative effects that we're dealing with in our societies today. Wow. And I know that, uh, you know, if, if there were a way to just love somebody into yeah. loving themselves, that would be yeah. a great superpower to have. Well, that mm -hmm. knocks my question off. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. Well, I hesitate to say it because I, I don't want, I, you know, you can't help but when people say some things like that, sometimes to roll your eyes like, you know, no, you know? but, I, but, so I, powerful. but I really, really mean it. I, I, yeah. I I'm. Uh, I ride down the street on the way to work in the morning and see a you know a child and waiting for the bus and immediately just imagine sending love to them. Yeah. You know, love. Mm -hmm. Hope you have the greatest day because we're all in this together. Right. And you know, I want love and health and happiness and success for right everybody. Yeah. Okay. Last question, and then I'm going to finish up with a quote, that quote by Marianne Williamson. I found it. Okay. Uh, is there a quote that's always been a mantra that you live by? Well, the Marianne Williamson quote has certainly been an important quote in my life and in uh, my daughter's yearbook. That was mm. the quote for her senior year that I placed an ad and put that Marianne Williamson quote. Um, I think keep moving forward. Mm. Would mine's be one. Like, there are many. Mine's Robert Frost. Um, okay. And he says, everything I've learned in life, I can sum up in three words. It goes Oops. on. Mm -hmm. And I love that because sometimes you get so stuck in the weeds, you don't see the beautiful valley that you're standing in. Mm -hmm. But you, it will keep going no matter what you're dealing with right today in this hour. It will get better. It will move on. And you will have a beautiful life. Beautiful. Okay. Thank you, guys. Before I finish up, uh, so like, how can people find uh, you? How can people reach out to you? Again, how can they get involved with uh, Leadership Southeast Georgia? Look up Leadership Southeast Georgia on Facebook. We're very active on there. In fact, we live streamed yeah. part of this uh, <laughs> interview. Um, also, you can email us at lasegainfo at gmail.com. That is L-S-E-G-A-I-N-F-O at gmail.com. Beautiful. Okay. All right. Thank you guys for joining us again on the show. Uh, I'm going to finish it up a little bit different today. And this is the quote we were talking about by Mary Ann Williamson in a Williamson in a return to love. Uh, here it is. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about sh shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine 
as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It is not just in some of us, it is in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. So that's the quote, Chills. beautiful quote. Uh -huh. yeah. Love you guys. Uh -huh. Thank you for joining us again today. Thank you for having Thank us. You. Yeah. And everybody go out there, have a great day. See you next week.